Welcome back friends. Today I'm going to show you how to take a pile of 3D printed parts and get them all attached and ready for sanding and painting. Let's jump right into it. In my previous video, I showed you my dead simple process for taking large 3D prints and slicing them down using the cut command in Prusa Slicer into bite-sized pieces that you can actually fit on your print bed. But the question remains, what do you do with those 3D printed parts afterwards? How do you glue them together and get them to a place where you can actually finish your project and have those large scale prints that you're after? I'm going to share with you both my successes and failures at this because I think there's something that can be learned from even our mistakes. So with that out of the way, I'm going to show you a couple of my past mistakes doing this. Last year, my son was super excited to be Thanos Black Panther for Halloween, so of course we fired up the 3D printer and got started. We had this massive Thanos sword, which was our first project, and as you can see it's in two pieces now because, well, it didn't hold together. This was really my first massive 3D print that I had to break down into smaller bite-sized chunks. You'll notice that the sword has four different segments and then the handle separately, and that's just for each half. The sword has two halves in total. And you can tell by looking at this that this didn't go together all that well. There's a lot of seam gaps and a lot of just big mess around all the seams. I'll explain why that happened. So when we printed this out, we had these individual pieces and we started using this Gorilla Glue that's sort of a, it's a super glue, but it expands a little bit. The problem with that was that it expanded and started to fill out and flow out of the seams of all of the objects when we started stacking them together. It also didn't seem to adhere as well as I'd like it to. We ended up printing this out of PETG. I think honestly PLA or PLA plus would have probably been a better choice for this, but that's what we went with at the time. And we did end up sanding and kind of getting this to a place where it was fairly smooth, but then the parts started breaking. Anytime we used it or anytime we swung it around even a little bit, the parts would break apart. And I think that's because of the glue that we used. So the solution there for the next part was to start to use a soldering iron to melt these joints together. Now the problem with that is that you lose a whole bunch of detail, as you can clearly see, and it starts to look kind of ridiculous. So to fill in those holes that were left from the soldering iron, we of course used a 3D printing pen, which just made matters slightly worse. In the end, that worked okay, but we had another problem, the handle. You see, in all of my wisdom, I tried to print the handle using as little infill as possible. When in fact, if you're printing a massive handle that's gonna hold two several foot tall pieces together, the best thing you can do is print it solid. Not only that, but what I did at the very end is drilled a hole down the center of each handle and I inserted a wooden dowel. That actually gave this quite a bit of structural rigidity and had I done that from the start, I think this print would have been far more successful. So that's mistake number one. Now his Thanos Black Panther suit wouldn't have been complete for Halloween had it not been for, of course, a Black Panther mask. So this helmet, I think is great detail. It looks really nice. And I'm a lot happier with how this one came out. This is also printed out of PETG. Again, I'd probably go for PLA Plus if I had it to do over again. What we did differently on this one though is we used a different type of super glue to connect the seams of this together. This helmet's actually in six pieces, but you'd never be able to tell by looking at it. After that, we went back through and I think a good option for PETG is, again, we used a soldering iron, but this time we used it from the inside out. So it's just on the inner seams. So of course my son had a brand new wish list for this year's Halloween and it's to print an entire Mark 85 Iron Man suit. Needless to say, there's gonna be lots of printing and sanding and cutting and slicing and painting. And so that's what I wanna get into right now and show you how I'm doing this with all those lessons I've learned in the past. With our parts all laid out, we're gonna grab our 220 grit sandpaper to start with. And we're gonna use this to sand the edges of the model. Now, I typically start with a fairly rough sandpaper. And the idea here is that we wanna create some surface abnormalities where we're gonna glue the two pieces together. This is gonna allow our glue to adhere to the surface far better than if we left it completely smooth. It only takes a few seconds and you're gonna to wanna to do both sides. Make sure you get all the edges 
And be careful not to get too crazy here. The last thing you want is to round off an edge or make the surface uneven. Now, you'll know you're done when most of the shine is off of each edge of the part that you want to glue together. And as soon as that's finished, you can just rinse and repeat. You're going to grab the second piece that you're gluing together and you're going to go ahead and sand those edges as well. When you're happy there, next up is the glue. And this is vital. I'm using Gorilla Micro Precise Super Glue. The link is going to be down in the description for this. And in my testing, this bonds PLA Plus extremely well. It actually fuses the two surfaces together, almost melting them in a way. And the smaller tip here makes applying the glue to each surface a lot easier. Now, this glue in particular is pretty interesting because it's actually reinforced to increase impact resistance and strength. And if you think about this, this is a part that we're going to actually end up wearing. We're going to be outside. We're probably going to be bashing it around. This is going to be on an 11 year old kid. So that's pretty vital that we have everything we can do to make this as strong as possible. So once you have a nice bead of glue down, simply attach the two sides of your 3D printed objects together. Now it may take several tries to get the alignment just right. And that's okay because the glue isn't going to set right away and once you are happy with the alignment you can typically just hold the two pieces together for 30 to 60 seconds long enough for the glue to start to bond the surfaces together now, if you have multiple pieces to glue together here's an important next step while this is being bonded together you're going to want to set it down someplace in a stable location and then you're going to want to test fit the other pieces you want to ensure that the angle and everything else is correct so that when you bond these additional pieces, you're going to have everything in the exact position that you need and you're not in for any surprises down the road. And once that's all done, just let your part dry. This can take a couple of hours, so don't worry about that. Now, one thing I like to do is come back to the pieces after the fact and I like to go and examine and see if there are any gaps left from the previous gluing, if there are any surface imperfections or holes, and I like to go and fill those back in with an additional layer of super glue. This is just going to make sure that everything is bonded as tightly as possible together and that you're going to get a better surface once you actually start sanding this and painting it later. At this point, it's time to start sanding. The object should be completely bonded together nice and sturdy. So we're going to go back and we're going to bust out our 220 grit sandpaper once again. And this time we're going to sand all of the surfaces. Now there are a couple things we want to do here. We want to get rid of layer lines, but more importantly, we also want to sand down all of those seams or gaps that we created when we bonded these pieces together. So by starting with the 220 grit sandpaper, we're going to get most of those surface imperfections out. Be careful not to sand in one spot too long. You don't want to melt the plastic by creating too much heat and you don't want to sit there and run through all of the surface layers of the material and get down to the infill. After you've gone over it with the 220, I typically sand with a 400 grit sandpaper just to get that a little bit smoother. And then finally finish it off with a thousand grit, which at this point should give you a pretty smooth surface, which is ready to be primed in potentially painted. Here's a semi-finished part that I've gone over with a thousand grit sandpaper. You can see most of the layer lines are gone. There's still some, but oftentimes the primer is going to fill some of that in. So here you can see one of the primer parts. This just has its first layer of primer. And the nice thing about layering down primer on top of the 3D print after it's been sanded is you're going to see exactly where those surface imperfections are. If there are any layer lines you need to sand additionally, or if there are any gaps or seams that are still showing up after the fact, this is where they're going to show up. And if all that goes well, you should be left with a 3D print that you're happy with. It's actually ready to be put to use for whatever its intended purpose was. So let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions, if I can help out with any of this. Obviously, this Iron Man suit is going to be a multi-week project, probably a couple months. So I'm going to have lots of updates to share with everybody. So hit that like and subscribe button if you want to see more as this project progresses. Thank you all so much. We'll see you next time.
Thanks.